Hey everyone, Felixer here, and uh, today I'm gonna rank all 47 Darkest Dungeon 2 combat items. Now, before we get started, I've tried to group them in um, groupings that make a little bit of sense. So I got the things that help with DOT cleansing, then I got the DOT damaging, then I got the healing items, the buffing items, and the debuffing items. Finally, we got the weapons at the end. So let's get started with the powders. Now the powders, they all increase um, resistance of a specific type by 66% and if you do resist you get minus one stress for three turns. So the powders are a reactive item so they're good that way they'll prevent DOTs from going through entirely and stopping damage that way but it is 66% extra so it, it is not a guarantee. So I think I'll put them in B tier and I'll put the clotting above the other two because clotting powder is more useful as bleed is more prevalent in the game than the other status effects. And next we have the cleansing uh, DOT items, the burn salve, the antivenom, and the bandages. Now these are reactive, uh, they will cleanse and they will heal 10% of your HP so it's good for taking someone off that store that way. But I think, I think they might be, they might be better because it is a guaranteed um, status cleanse instead of these which is a 60% chance of not getting it. So. Yeah, I think they'll be slightly bit better, but you know, they're they're still okay items. I'll put you know B tier, and then oh yeah, the medicinal herbs. This clears all DOTs, and that's very good, especially for attacks that inflict multiple, like first trumpet or hollow vessel. But they do not heal. That is the downside. I still think it does make it very good, so I'll put it I'll put it to the top. And next we have the DOT damage items. So we have the single target ones, the incendiary cocktail, the Icar bomb, and the spiked ball. These all deal 5 over 3 turns of the specific DOT type. And I think these are... These are not A tier. I mean, they do a lot of damage, but there's plenty of other combat items that also do a lot of damage. So they're not they're not too crazy. They're, they're B tier. We've got lots of B tiers. But next, we have the grenade variants. These attack the entire party for 3, for three turns. So we got the Spore Grenade, the Greek Fire Grenade, and the Scrap Grenade. These are definitely A tier. Like, the entire party, you can ping off so many tokens as well as checking death blows on multiple enemies. These are just really good in general. And finally we have the Otherworldly Fragment. Now this, this is, this is very good, but I'll put this at the end of A tier because still it's single attack, but it is very good for cleansing, well, killing big bosses and other larger type enemies. It's 30 damage over 3 turns, so really really good. Next we have the serrated items, we got the crow's feet. Now the crow's feet are really only good for paying off tokens, realistically. They do minus 20 move res and they do reduce speed by a little bit, but really they don't do all that much damage, so it's really only good for just getting rid of tokens and perhaps checking death blow if you know the one bleed is enough. And the bear trap. Now the bear trap, I think is very good. It immobilizes and does bleed on top of that. And immobilizing is very good if you do have a party that can move enemies. As that basically just makes them useless for a few turns. So this is definitely, um, I'll put this um, here, yeah, here. Next up we have the healing items. So let's start with the triage kit. 75% healing, but you only get one of them. Still good definitely at least A tier. I'm not sure if it's at the top of A tier, but uh, I think it is. It's almost a full heal, and it is a guaranteed heal, so yeah, definitely definitely top of A tier. Our next healing item is the Adrenaline Tonic. This heals 50%, you get two of them, but they do have the caveat that they add one stress. Now, if you have a team that can deal with stress, it's not too big a deal, it's only one stress, but if you can't really deal with stress while you want to use this item, that is a very big um, big problem. Because if you do have a meltdown, all the health you'd have healed goes back down to 10%, so not really not really worth sometimes. But it is pretty good. I, I'll put it next to the triage kit. I think, I think they're pretty equal. Next we have the healing solve. The healing solve heals 33%, you get two of them, and there's no downsides. So healing solve, immediate S tier. It doesn't heal as much as the triage kit, but I think spreading out your healing is much better because unless you have like a 
a steady amount of taunt and guards, your entire team's gonna get hit, so you might want to spread out your healing a bit. So definitely S tier. Next, we have the Pustule Solve. This is also a, a S tier, I think, because it heals 25%, which is not as much as the Healing Solve, but it does cleanse all DOTs, so very, very good. You'll probably heal more by cleansing DOTs than just using a flat, you know, Healing Solve, so this is this is probably better than Healing Solve, actually. I'll put it, you know, to the top of S tier. Next, we have Mineral Rich Spring Water. Mineral Rich Spring Water, solid, solid item, heals 3 stress and 10% HP, which, you know, a little bit of HP healing is always good as that can bring you from Death's Door. And this is the biggest stress healing item in the game. So definitely, definitely S tier. And now we have Laudanum. Laudanum heals only one stress, but it also does cure horror, and you can have more of them in inventory. But I mean it is good for reducing your stress from you know four to three. So you get rid of the negative banter. So it's good for that, but I think I'd put it um I put it here. It's a, it's a solid heal item. Next up we have Ethereal Dust. Now, Ethereal Dust I don't use too much. So what it does is it cleanses all skill cooldowns, which is good because some skills you want to use um, either back to back or immediately for some fat damage. So this is probably very good. I don't use it as much, but I can see how useful it is. So I put it, I put it here, right below the adrenaline tonic. And then now we have our buff items. We have starting off with the blood. The blood gives plus crit, plus strength, and plus speed. But it comes with the downside of giving you horror, so you get one stress over three turns. I mean, it's it's okay if you want to like immediately delete an enemy or like just like try to finish a boss quickly, so you don't have to deal with the horror. But if you can cure horror, like if you have laudanum, then it is very very good. So I'd put this buff item probably next to Ethereal Dust. Next up we have Warhorn. Warhorn I think is S tier, straight up. It gives the entire party two stacks of strength. That is very very good, especially if you have a team that just deals flat damage instead of DOT damage, you get more value that way. So definitely definitely S tier. Now we have Stimulant. Stimulant is basically Warhorn but only for one single target and it doesn't give two, it only gives one strength. But it does give you 5 speed, so that's very good for if you want to act next turn quickly to kill something before you can act. So this is also like a delete enemy type weapon. I'd put this, um, I'd put this below, um, actually, I'd put this much further down. It's, it's okay. It's, it's not bad, but it's okay. Next up, we have Noisemaker. Now, Noisemaker was good for Obsession. I'm pretty sure it's not good for Obsession anymore, so... Uh, it's still good for taunting, so you can prevent a very vulnerable teammate from getting attacked if they're very low. And it also gives a block to, you know, reduce damage that way. This is... This is also next to Stimulants, I think. It's a solid item. And then we have um, an item I've never used before, the Unnatural Pigment. This copies every positive uh, enemy token. So if you're going up against enemies that have lots of, you know, positive tokens, you can just copy that. But it doesn't steal them, so I mean, it's still good, it's still still good, definitely. But you still have to deal with the positive tokens the enemy has, anyways. So not as good as highway robbery. I put this. Um, it's definitely at least um, here because it does copy everything. So if you do have an enemy that has lots of tokens, you can copy all of them immediately. So very very good. And then next up we have Invigorating Intoxicant. This basically ups your character's death blow resistance to the max, which is I think 95, so that's like a 1 in 20 chance of getting killed for 3 turns. So basically being like very hard to kill for 3 turns is like very very good. I might put this S tier. It also gives you speed if you want to act next turn quickly and get off death's door, so a very good item, yeah. And then we have the Shimmering Powder. Shimmering Powder is good for Grave Robber and Silent Treatment. And for, you know, protecting vulnerable teammates. But other than that, its uses... I mean, the plus speed is very negligible, plus 2 speed isn't a lot. So I'd put this... i put this here, below Stimulants. And then we have our Smelling Salts. Smelling Salts... I think are good, but the application to use it is very hard. Because enemies that do stun you, they stun you in a certain weird order, so 
you might your stun might go through before you know a character can heal you with this. But it also gives you dodge, so that's still an upside. I'd put this probably above above these because healing uh, days is very very good. Healing a stun is even better. That's basically getting your turn back. So top of B tier. And then next up we have our debuff removing items. There's only two: the holy water and the milk soaked linen. Now the holy water, I might be a bit biased, but I think it's I think it's S tier at least. Because I use holy water exclusively for exemplar. He can cure combos like all the time and he can never get off his exaltation, which is very very good, as well as clearing all negative debuffs and tokens. So holy water definitely definitely S tier. Milk soaked linen um I mean really it's only good for leper because leper has constant blind. But if you do, if you are going against certain enemies that do give you a lot of blind, this is also very good. But I don't see it going higher than probably bottom of bottom of eight here, because you can cleanse blindness by using other items too. Next up, we have the pouch of lie. Now, the pouch of lie can be useful or it can be completely useless, just depending on your team composition. If you have a team that has um, corpse clear abilities, then it's basically kind of useless. But it is useful for when you really have to get rid of a corpse quickly and you can't wait for a teammate's turn, such as against carrion eaters or characters, uh, sorry, enemies in the fetter. So I'd put this definitely useful probably about here. Yeah, I'll put this right in between these two. And now we got our, I think this is Toxic Icker. It basically lowers all DOT resistance by 33%. Um. I mean, it's okay, but it's not that good. But it does affect the whole party, which is good. So I'd put this probably right here. Yeah, next to the top of the beat here. And next we have Death Cap Spores. Death Cap Spores are very, very good, especially against um, knights, which have high death blow resistance and bosses because it lowers their blight resistance and death blow resistance by minus 33%. So you have a very good chance of killing um, enemies when you put this on them. But you're checking death blow a bunch of times anyway, so probably not S tier. We'll just keep it. We'll just keep it about uh, here. Yeah. Next we have linseed, linseed oil. Linseed oil is good for two things. If you want to burn something or if you want to move something. So very very good especially if something has high move resist or high burn resist and it does serve a dual purpose so that bumps it up at least to eight here I believe I put it I put it behind crow's feet yeah because it only does affect uh, one target I believe next up we have chalk dust now chalk dust affects the entire party and prevents stealth for two turns so this is very good especially against cultists in the denial and against the uh, swine and the sluice. So definitely A tier, probably about here. Yeah. Next up we have Fisherman's Net. Fisherman's Net basically immobilizes. It's a solid immobilize, it gives two immobilize. So if you manage to move a enemy to somewhere that they don't want to be, either the back or the front, and just keep them there, they're basically useless for like two, three turns. So this is very, very good if you know how to use it. So I put this at least in um, A tier as well, probably a bit better than the bear trap. Right, right above the bear trap. Right next we have our pyrotechnic dazzlers. Pyrotechnic dazzlers give um, five different statuses. Well, they can give one of five. Well, more accurately. So I think it's blind, vulnerable, dazed, stun, or minus speed. I mean, it's a bit too RNG, but it is good either way either way but the RNG makes it a bit worse so I'd put this I put this below yeah I put this here in B tier now the smoke bombs are very, are very very good smoke bombs give two blind that is two chances the enemy has to miss and it also pings off tokens in case you need to do that so I'd put this in I put this here yeah here it's a solid item Thunderclap Grenade, I think might be S tier. Thunderclap Grenade is very, very good. It shuffles the entire enemy party and has a chance to stun them. 
the stun itself is very good and the shuffle is incredibly good so I'd put this probably above holy water it's, it's a very good item next we have shred of decency shred of decency removes one stack of worship from whatever enemy you put it on however uh, the main way to avoid worship is you know just to kill whatever cultist is generating it but if you can't like if it's a sherp that has a lot of dodge then this can be good to avoid exaltation in a pinch so definitely definitely to the top of B tier probably about here exaltation is a very devastating move and you'd like to avoid that next up we have our weapons now Wilbur's flag is interesting it gives vulnerability and combo but it only attacks the front two ranks and can only be used by the back two ranks so you gotta you gotta use it very specifically but it is good for setting up a huge leper hit or anything that takes combo finale so definitely very very good for setting up um, attacks I put this I put this um, here because you still have to use an attack but it is good setup next we have the makeshift javelin this this is S tier this might be better than a lot of things it knocks back an enemy by three and it also immobilizes them so you can basically make a frontline enemy useless for two rounds and that is that is incredible honestly this is a very good item next up we have the bone saw the bone saw is a straight up just frontline nuke you can only can it, it is basically a point blank shot it can only be used by rank one it can only hit rank one and it does basically leopard damage 6 to 12 and it comes with a heavy five point bleed but considering this can only hit rank one it's probably not s tier but it is very good so i put this i put this about here yeah very very good item now finally we have um a strange item because it doesn't really do anything except increase flame but increasing flame is very very useful so this might make this either s tier or d tier but i'll put this s tier because you want to avoid cultist ambush as that can kill you very very quickly and this will help you with that especially if you have bad RNG with assistance encounters. So Glimpse of Hope, S tier. Right, and that's all 47 Darkest Dungeon 2 items ranked. Um, let me know what you think, if I got some of these wrong, or you disagree, let me know down in the comments. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time.